Hey, gang, we got a big one today. Locked over cross on, man. We're going to do our thing. Kate Rob from Locked On Gophers coming up on Locked On Huskers. You are Locked On Huskers, your daily podcast on the Nebraska Corn Huskers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, it's game time. We love it. It's good stuff all the way around. I'm DP, Locked On Huskers. Thank you for making Locked On Huskers your first watch and listen each and every single day. Your Huskers every day. Thank you for what you do, you everydayers. Thumbs up to you. You are greatly appreciated. Before we get into the crossover version of this thing, Mark Onweiler, let our people know about LinkedIn Jobs. Thank you, DP. This episode of Locked On Huskers is brought to you by LinkedIn. Now, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Now, it's super easy to do. If you are watching this on a computer or on your phone, your computer skills are good enough to create a LinkedIn Jobs posting. You add your job and then the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And as you know, making that right hire makes all the difference. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Now, LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. DP, back to you. Thank you, buddy. It's a big one, man. This is fire this thing up. This is where we pause so you can go and click subscribe. Go ahead and do that for us. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, for those of you, the numbers look good and we appreciate you hanging out with us each and every single day. It's game week and... And the crossover version of things allows me to get into the heart and the heads of Gopher Nation. We can find out. Let's bring it uh, from, from, from Locked On Gophers, Kane Rob. Brother, thank you for doing this. How are you today? I'm good. I'm ready for some football. It has been seven long months, and I'm just ready to see this action on the gridiron. It's so, so, so much of this for me, and I'm excited because it allows me uh, to share with Husker fans some of the things that are going on on that side. And yeah. When I tell you that Husker fans want to know about Minnesota, it's 100% P.J. Fleck. So give us what – who is P.J. Fleck? Behind the scenes, up close, who is P.J. Fleck? Because Husker fans want to know. Look, I know not just Husker fans, but many fans in the Big Ten Conference, a lot of those rivals, they're like, this guy is fake. He's a car salesman. He's <laughs> Whatever you got to say, I've heard it all. And I will be 100% real with you. He is that energized all the time, away from the cameras, away from all of it. Even if you're out there just walking the field, talking about practice or anything, he has that energy. So, I mean, it's not a shtick by any means. That is who he is, um, and I think he does. He lives that to his full extent. So I give credit where credit's due. Um, I'm extremely happy to see the results ticking up in the right way. And you know what? If he's not the right fit for you, I get it 100%. He's not going to be the right fit for everybody. But I, I always get a little caught off guard when folks just say, like, he's a used car salesman or things because I'm like, no, he's really like that. Like, even if you just have a conversation with him. So, I mean, it's not for everybody, but it's who he is. Well, it, it, it's producing wins, and that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Let's get into the offensive side of the ball. Um, and in full disclosure, Kane and I have been talking. So there's some some kismet there that we, we want to share with both sides of the aisle here. So offensively for Minnesota, if Nebraska fans want to know, what is the identity of Minnesota's offense? What do you think it'll be? Yeah, it's a great question, especially for 2023. I think it's always been kind of run first. We've been a ground and pound team, especially these last two years. We've had almost close to 70% run and 30% pass, which is pretty wild to think about. But I do think we're going to see a bit more balance. I still think it'll be more run heavy. I think it'll be more of that 60, 61% run and towards 40% pass. And I think in PJ Flex most successful years with Western Michigan and even 2019 here with Minnesota, we were sit sitting more around that 61 to 
pass or, or run and then passing a little bit more frequently. I think that's what he hopes to do moving forward. So I think that Gophers fans are all kind of sitting on the edges of our seats, hoping we're going to pass some more this year. And we'll be questioning it just as much as you Huskers fans coming into week one. But I'm expecting them to pass the ball a bit more. I saw a lot more in fall camp in the quick passing game with so many versatile weapons as pass catchers and having that be kind of the deepest room that we have on this roster. I'm very intrigued by it. I think we'll get closer to that 60 40 split. Put me at the top of the pyramid for this receiver group. Who are the stars and what are the names that Husker fans are going to have to get used to hearing on Thursday night? Yeah, I think the name that is at the top of this list right now, just receiver-wise, is Daniel Jackson, in my opinion. I think last year we saw him come alive. He started the year a little bit slow, but he was coming back from an injury. He would missed almost the entire fall camp. As he got warmed up, he had multiple multiple touchdown games. He had multiple 100-yard or greater games. He led the receivers in receiving yards last year. And ever since that bowl game and Wisconsin game where he kind of came alive, every spring practice, every fall practice, this guy is making grabs that are just absolutely leave you your jaw hanging a little bit. So I think he's going to lead the room. Now we have Chris Amon Bell, seventh year guy coming in. It's really crazy to say seventh year for any player in college football, but Overall, he is very consistent, very sure-handed, and he's been getting back up to full speed. So I think those two will be kind of the first starters you'll see out there, along with Corey Crooms, the Western Michigan transfer in the slot. But I do think that this Minnesota room is going to have more rotation at the wide receiver position than we've probably seen before. I think those three plus two other receivers will really see a vast amount of snaps on the year. And those two others are Elijah Spencer, the transfer from Charlotte, who is probably my favorite when it comes to his skill set, just because his release package is really nice off of the line of scrimmage. And then the other one is Lamecki Brockington, who has been in some on the end of some highlights that have been very good for the Gophers this last season. King, t- please tell me about this offensive line because that's a that's a that's an area of concern and question. Uh, it could be strength, we don't know. But tell me your thoughts on this off Minnesota offensive line. Honestly, the offensive line has me a little bit worried heading into this year. Usually with Coach Callahan as our offensive line coach, I've been very confident, even replacing four starters last year. I had a lot of confidence in that group. This year, I have a little bit more questions, and it's mainly on two positions. So we've got two returning starters coming, the left tackle and Ariante Ursary, really talented, really athletic big man. So he is someone that I feel can really take another leap this upcoming season. And then we've got Quinn Carroll. He transferred in from Notre Dame. He played right tackle for us last year but they've kicked him into the right guard position because he does a lot better at pass blocking than he does when it or not pass blocking he does a lot better at run blocking than he does at pass blocking so they want to use more of his strengths in that guard position the center we're replacing john michael schmidt so we've got nathan bow coming in but nathan bow is a six-year guy who's been playing behind john michael schmidt for the past three four years now and he also has slotted in and been kind of that first offensive lineman in in any case of injury this past season so he played in the bowl game for john michael schmidt he played at guard for a couple guys last year he brings elements of leadership to this offensive line that the guys are just swarming around him he's got that draw to him and it feels like we haven't lost too much of a step at the center but it's the left guard and the right tackle positions where I have a lot of questions. Um, so that's kind of where we've heard this past press conference that Coach Black isn't necessarily sticking to five offensive line starters. Now, we'll see if that's just talk or if it's the real deal. But it sounds like Minnesota could be rotating offensive linemen at those two other positions. Man, this is so good. This is Locked On Crossover. It is Locked On Huskers, Locked On Gophers, and we're setting this all up. We'll throw it a break. When we come back, Kane, I really want to dive into you've got a, you know, a running game that we got to talk about, quarterback we got to talk about, and then we'll jump to the defensive side of the ball here. Locked On Huskers. We'll be right back. Hey, gang, welcome back to Locked On Huskers. It's the Locked On crossover as we prepare uh, Minneapolis Thursday night. Gophers, Huskers, Fleck versus Rule. We've got all sorts of things. All all of the different uh, crossover questions are in play. Minnesota has a quarterback that Husker fans are familiar with, but we still don't know who he is. Talk to me about the leadership position for for this Gophers offense. 
Yeah, I think that's the big word for Ethan this offseason. I think he's really stepped into that leadership role. Um, even seventh-year guy Chris Ottman Bell has been singing his praises as far as the step he's taken as a leader and being more vocal, not only feeling like he can really correct people if they ran this wrong route or if they're not seeing what, what should be done on the field, but also in the fact of kind of picking guys up when they're hanging their heads or picking guys up in the areas of like cheering them on or – calling them out for the good things they're doing as well. Um, I know that Ethan had mentioned he really took that from Tanner last year and watching how he could really coach up his other teammates, but he didn't necessarily know if he could do that. He was more quieter. He was kind of more reserved in that fact. But I feel like over this offseason, he's really taken that and really ran with it. And so I'm excited to see that because when you're around this guy, this quarterback, he's got some silliness to him. He's got he's lighthearted, but then he's also got some quiet confidence to him. So I'm really intrigued by the upside that he brings, not only on the field, but off the field too. What does he do, do well, and what does he need to improve it? So Ethan is extremely talented. Like his arm, some of the throws, even last year in fall camp at this time, when Tanner was our guy, we knew he was the starter. There were plays that Ethan was making that I was like, how? Like, how did he drop that in there between the safety and the corner and coverage in the perfect spot in the red zone to Brevin's band? Like, there was plays that he'd make that I was just like, this kid is special. But I think the things that he really need is, needs is that experience, and it kind of played out that way last year when it came to Tanner getting hurt and he had to step in. And I think the biggest thing for him is being able to comfortably get through those progressions and make the right read, not second-guessing himself, but really – you know, taking the chance and then also knowing when to take a chance and knowing when not to risk it. I think that could be the learning curve for Ethan this 2023 season is I think in the early spring and in the early fall, we've seen him try to get away with some things and maybe it turns into a turnover. Maybe it turns into uh, a batted down pass because it was just too close of a window. I think he's been trying to get a feel for that and what he can get away with and what he can't. But then as we've gotten further into fall camp, it seems like the decision making has been a lot better and he's not making as many risks unless the situation calls for it. Kate, who what are the names at running back? Because that was the position that was the identity and character of Minnesota football for the past few years. Who are the names this year? Yep. So there's four guys that might get the opportunity to see the field. Bryce Williams is that elder statesman. He's got one year of eligibility left. He's kind of, I see him more as a consistency back. He can spell the others, but I don't see him as an every down type of guy. But Coach Fleck loves his vets, so he'll probably see the field at some point. The three names that really keep in mind, I think, are Sean Tyler, who comes from Western Michigan. I think Sean Tyler is going to be a factor in this running back room in 2023. Like, if there's anybody I had to put my chips on and say, this guy leads in yards or this guy gets the most opportunities every game, I think it's going to be Sean Tyler. I think the speed that he brings is it pops off right from the second we got to see him in practice. He's got some next level speed and he can have that home run hitting ability, but I don't think he's a guy that gets 25, 30 carries a game. He's just not built like that. He's not sized like that. So he's definitely a guy that will play more in a uh, committee. So I think that's where it comes in of who plays in the committee with him. We've got two freshmen that could step up in there, a true freshman and Darius Taylor from Michigan, four-star guy. And then we've got a redshirt freshman from Texas and Zach Evans. I think either one of them could really fill that role. And I think all three of them will get carries on the season. I think it might be more game plan based heading into the year. I'm really intrigued by Darius Taylor with that pairing of Sean Tyler because they're kind of polar opposites. Uh, Darius Taylor is a north-south runner. He doesn't shy from contact. He can put his shoulder down. They love using him in the red zone. So I think we could see him in there with Sean Tyler a lot. But then Zach Evans might be more of the alumni parts of the field where you can let, really let him go east-west and make cuts and try to find an opening. It's going to be fascinating to watch. I want to jump to the other side of the ball because as we talk about the offensive line, you and I have talked about the defensive front for Minnesota and how vital, how vital it's going to be. What type of personnel and talent exists in Minnesota's front line defensively? I think there's a lot of young guys in this defensive line. Um, it's a big question mark. Uh, it's probably, especially the interior is probably my biggest question mark for the entire Gophers roster. That's the one that I'm, I have a bit of concerns with. There's not a whole lot of depth there, especially on the defensive tackle position. Now we usually run four down linemen. So def we usually have two defensive tackles on the field and there's probably only six that maybe have a shot at playing this season. 
So if any one of them goes down, it can really take a wear and tear on this room, uh, especially because this defensive line, Coach Joe Rossi loves rotating his D-line. Like there will be a minimum of eight or nine players on the defensive line getting snaps in the games. So the defensive tackles, you've got Devin Eastern, who's a young guy. He's been he's from Minnesota. He's been coming up. I think he could create some problems on the interior. He's got a lot of upside. Beyond him, you've got some vets like Kyler Ba, uh, uh, Darnell Jeffries, and a couple others. But I don't know if they really scare an opposing offensive line. But the edge has a ton of upside, a ton of youth, and that's where I think could make or break the upside of the defense. We've got a guy in Anthony Smith that when scouts come to town, they're always asking about this kid. They're like, oh, who's he? And Coach Fleck is telling them, nope, he's still got two more years. You don't want to you don't want to have him. You can't have those conversations yet. But he's got a, a lot of athleticism. He might be the best basketball player on the team, too. And he just is built for the Big Ten. Uh, a lot of speed, great bend to him. And and then on the other side, we've got Jod Joyner, too, who had the most pressures for Minnesota on the edge. But he couldn't get home on him. I think that's where Coach Winston DeLatibadeer who is an alumni coming back. He's brought a lot of life and energy to this D-line room. So a lot of Gophers fans are questioning, will we see those changes from the jump? Will we see that new life, that new energy, and getting the final actual sack completions as opposed to just creating pressures? Is some of the pressure going to come from that linebacker group that has some athletes back there that you have some run and hit guys, but you have some athletes that are edge setters and boundary guys. Talk about the linebacker group for us. Yeah, I think you'll definitely see some pressures coming from the linebackers. And that Sam linebacker position is always kind of a a hybrid position for the Gophers. Uh, We see our nickel slot into that Sam every once in a while. Jack Henderson, the transfer, is going to be a huge player for the Gophers. He steps in for Flip Dixon, who had over 500 snaps last year. I think Jack Henderson might play even more than Flip Dixon did. And his pass rushing grade at the FCS level was like in the 90s for PFF. So he's got some some oomph to him. He can get in the backfield in a hurry. But then Devin Williams has been a name that's been on a lot of blitz packages that I've noticed in the fall camp. So I'm excited to see how they use him as that weak side linebacker. And then Cody Lindenberg is just, he can move. I feel like the speed element of the linebackers, it plays as an advantage for the Gophers. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some blitz packages with linebackers coming too. And it's a fascinating matchup, and it's glorious in that, you know, we get to have these conversations now uh, throughout the season, and it's good to get context because you get in a vacuum of only hearing Minnesota folks talk about Minnesota or Nebraska mm-hmm. people talking about Nebraska, and you go outside the circle, and the conversation changes. Kane Rob, we're going to take a break and close out uh, Locked on Huskers. I need to get your prediction. And then a little storytelling about row the boat. We'll do that when we come back to Locked on Huskers. Hey, gang, welcome back to Locked On Huskers. It's been a good one, Locked On Crossover. Uh, the Gophers and the Huskers, and Thursday night, it's magnificent. Kane, Rob, uh, thank you once again for, for doing this and, and and allowing us some insight and some behind the scenes, peeking behind the curtain that is the wizard of P.J. Fleck, uh, and then to hear some of what, what's going on there uh, in Minneapolis. And I will see you uh, at the stadium looking forward to it. Um, question for you. For Husker fans that are going to go to Minneapolis, what do they need to know? What do they need? Traffic, uh, food at the stadium, we all good? Yeah, the food, I got to do a food tasting this last week or two ago, and the food is, I love it. I love it. You got to try the strawberry shortcake nachos. I'm going to tell you right now, you might be hesitant, but it's worth it. And then they've got burnt ends mac and cheese as well that chef's kiss like I was all for it. Parking wise, I would definitely get there early. And then when you're leaving the game, expect you might have a little bit of weight just because I feel like some of the parking garages, as you get up in those levels in them, it takes a little bit to get out of them. I know that the the uh, school has been working to improve their their parking areas as far as getting out of them before and after the games. There's been some updates that have been happening in some of them, but I don't know if they're fully ready to get in there. So be early and then be prepared to maybe sit a little bit as you're getting out of those garages. What's your prediction? What do you think happens from the Minnesota side? What do you think happens? You know, I think it's going to all hinge on just – if Minnesota is willing to get into the quick passing game. I think that's a big factor for me and allowing Ethan to get hot quick. If he can't, if it, if it becomes more of a like 
hesitancy and the reads just aren't there, I think Minnesota could struggle in this one. But if he gets firing on all cylinders and he starts to create a rhythm, I think they could be a problem. Regardless, I think it's going to be a one-score game. Uh, I think Minnesota might have an edge just having a little bit more consistency with the staff. So I would put Minnesota maybe in a single-score game as my pick because I trust in the consistency of Joe Rossi on that defense as the defensive coordinator. So that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. You know, I'm going to be so kind to you here. I was going to have you give give the three words that mean so much to us here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, but you got to live there in Minnesota. Those folks may chase you if they ever caught you. Uh, <laughs> same thing here. If I if you have your three words, we have our three words. I'll let you say your three words, and then we'll say ours. What are the three words that mean the most most to the Gophers? <laughs> Bro, the boat is probably one of the ones. Otherwise, Sky Yuma is probably the one I would lean into personally. All right, we're all for that. Uh, Kane, Rob, Locked On, Locked On Gophers. Thank you, kind sir. Thank you for making Locked On Huskers your first watch and listen each and every single day. And again, we close it with the three words that in Lincoln, Nebraska, rain so heavy in the sky. Go Big Red. <laughs>